welcome to Flemington, New Jersey. The northeasternmost stop for NASCAR's new Super Truck Series by Craftsman. Will this be the rundown Thunder Road or the promised land? the Flemington, New Jersey, one of the most unique short track ovals anywhere in the country. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Joy. They've been racing here since 1916. Five years ago, this dirt oval was paved and now they run asphalt modifieds on a weekly basis. They call this place the Squared Circle. And Glenn Jarrett, you got to run some laps here in the super truck this afternoon. What's it like out there? I think I made a circle square out of it, Mike. Uh, we got in the uh, Chevrolet promo truck today and ran about 15 20 laps it is totally one of the most unique unusual racetracks I have ever driven on I never could find a straightaway if there's one out there uh, it certainly didn't show itself to me you're constantly in a turn you're turning all the time and you're on and off the accelerator it's unique it's fun there's a lot of room a lot of room for the guys to get under one another as they got under me and passed me on by but it should be a very exciting race you're out to the wall back to the inside back out to the wall this is gonna be fun there are four different straightaways here and four very sharp corners, but you drive the track just like a circle. It'll be a unique challenge for our super truck drivers tonight under 80-degree skies and a beautiful evening for racing. Let's go to the starting grid, Randy Pemberton. Well, thanks, Mike. You would think experience would play a role in getting around this tight little tough racetrack, and it probably will. On the pole in a Ford is Mac Tools Ford, Joe Rutman. Joe, you got a lot of experience in race cars, now race trucks, but what about experience on a track like this? I have to admit, it's a unique track. I've, I've run a lot of racetracks, and uh, it's, it's a fun place, but it, it, uh, it'll get you in a heartbeat, there's no doubt about it. What about qualifying on the pole? How good is this truck? Uh, we practiced real good, but didn't practice today real good, but uh, if we can get the handle back, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Okay, good luck this evening. Like we said, Joe Rutman on the pole, track record, of course, 19 two, three seconds for Rutman. On the outside of run, row one is Bill Sedgwick, a guy that is known for taking care of his equipment, but he put the muscle in it in qualifying. You got her up there to second. What about it here tonight? Can you win? Well, I'll tell you, this Spears team uh, really put a good Chevy pickup together for me here today, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of tough Chevy trucks behind me. It's going to be 150 lap races to see what we can do. Okay, good luck for you. Uh, well, his best finish so far this year is a second back in April at Bakersfield. Now let's go topside to Mike Joy and Glenn Jarrett, who will call the action this evening. Guys? Thanks, Randy. Packed house here at Flemington, New Jersey. This race has been sold out for weeks, and they're looking forward to super truck action. As I know you are, we'll be right back. Today's cars are a technological wonder. So many makes, so many models, so many parts. In the old days, one standard part would fit many cars. Not anymore. The search for someone committed to having the part you need when you need it can be downright treacherous. You need auto parts specialists, like all pro and bumper to bumper. At all pro and bumper to bumper, auto parts are our business and our only business. The auto parts specialist. All pro and bumper to bumper. We didn't get into super truck racing just to add another trophy to our collection or to add another 15 minutes to our fame. And we didn't do it just to show up the competition. Okay, maybe we did. Chevy trucks, like a rock. any given day at Sun Valley Middle School, you'll see something going on that is quite inspiring. Mr. Burns knows that to motivate and educate his students, he must make the learning process fun and interesting. And that's why NASCAR is now a part of everyday life for these students who are using NASCAR to help study math, science, reading, art, and even physical fitness. NASCAR, the teams and drivers, would like to recognize all of the teachers like Mr. Burns who are using NASCAR to help educate children.
by All Pro Bumper to Bumper, the auto part specialist. And by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. They have fired engines here at Flemington, New Jersey. Here's tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. On the pole, Joe Rutman, 115 mile an hour lap in his Ford first pole of the year. Bill Sedgwick, former Winston West champ, starts right alongside. Ron Hornaday Jr., former Southwest Tour champion of NASCAR, and Scott Legacy, the former SCCA road race champ, qualifies fourth. The high Plains drifter Rick Corelli, another Southwest Tour champion, and Jack Sprague, he's in a Rick Hendrick truck starting tonight. That's row three. Row number four, Mike Skinner, who leads the league in victories, and Dennis Setzer in the only dodge in the field starts eight. Ninth from the Northwest comes Toby Butler and the Southwest champ Steve Portengay. That's row number five. Mike Bliss in a Ford, and Sammy Swindell, whose arms are tired after flying in from Knoxville to run here tonight. He'll go back there for our live show late this evening in the sprint car. Row seven, Kenny Allen in number 65, and Dave Resendiz driving the Jeff Bodine Ford. Back in row number eight, John Nemechek with new sponsorship on his number 87 Chevy truck, and the winner at Denver, Butch Miller in a Ford. Row number nine, Michael Dawkin back in the series from Florida, and Bob Strait driving his own Chevrolet. In row number nine, Jerry Glanville driving his own Ford, and that's Bob Breback's Ford, 20th. Mike Chase replaces P.J. Jones. Mike, the defending Winston West champion, he's in the diehard number one. And Jimmy Dick out of El Paso, Texas in his own Chevrolet. Row number 12, John Kinder, the youngster from California, and Frank Davis from the Legends Cars. He is now in a Ford truck. Finally, Kerry Teague, who spun on his qualifying lap but did not post a time. They are pushing Teague's truck through turn number two, trying to get him fired and get him rolling, and we'll be ready to go. You're gonna ride along in the fastest pizza delivery truck in the world, Ron Hornaday in the Papa John's Chevrolet, Ron Hornaday Jr. There's a look over his shoulder and out the back window over the spoiler and the bed cover and looking straight ahead over the hood of hornaday's number 16 as the sun glistens down on the asphalt here at flemington and you'll get an idea just how tough it is to get around here there's uh, ron hornaday's dancing shoes Got those black simpsons ready to go to work gas break gas break gas break mike skinner the gm goodwrench service chevrolet of Richard Childress. Skinner, who leads the league, getting set to go to work. Six victories. Phoenix, Portland, Odessa. Or rather, make that polls. Louisville, Milwaukee, and Indianapolis. And those are the views we'll show you from the Goodwrench Chevrolet. All right, Kerry Teague has coasted into the pit area. It's his first trip back since Topeka. Let's have a look at this racetrack. 1915 is when they built it. That is just about what it looks like from overhead. The track was paved in 1991 due to environmental concerns. Paul Cool, the promoter, decided to pave his racetrack rather than face regulation. Hey, Mike, it on dirt. Excuse me, Mike. You know, if I'd seen that diagram there before I went out, I might have made the race tonight. <laughs> Perhaps. One lap to go, and we'll go racing. It was kind of, kind of fun seeing uh, Hornaday use the footwork there because that's, I, I thought to myself when I first went out there, man, you got to keep one on the brake, one on the gas all the time. Well, a man who knows this place best sits alongside Doug Hoffman, has won four modified track championships and holds the track record here nearly three seconds a lap faster than the trucks qualified. What about getting around this circle? Well, you were talking about the brake pedal. Actually, this racetrack, when these guys get comfortable, probably won't use the brake at all. The only time they'll use the brake is if there's a wreck in front of them and hopefully they have all front brake in it so the car the truck will just go straight do you ever get the steering wheel completely straight here never you put the car <laughs> in one position and you keep it there all the way around and a lot of times you'll put the gas pedal in one position and it'll stay there all the way around and this will be a true test to some of these guys neck muscles i hope they have headrests in or they'll be tired so it's a momentum racetrack it's a momentum racetrack and the centrifugal force will get you let's get at it for the first 75 lap half of this 150 lap super truck event it is Rutman on the brake. Hornaday inside makes the pass. Unbelievable. Ron Hornaday went right for it. Dropped to the bottom. 
and he takes off. Looks like Joe's truck maybe pushed down a little bit there coming off that corner. He just didn't quite, couldn't stay in the gas like Horner they did. Randy. Yeah, the deal is, guys, these tires are very, very hard here. Goodyear came with a tough, hard compound. Drivers told me before this race, it takes a long time to heat these things up. So be very careful on restarts and green flags. And that's probably exactly what happened to Joe Rutman. Car pushed up a little bit, or did they stuck it in there? Yeah, I don't think Ron was listening to that, uh, to that admonishment. Hornaday's taken off with the lead. Doug, I'm a little surprised that on most of this track, how low they're running, they don't really get all the way out to the wall. No, not really. And if, uh, you know, he got out front there, but if anybody's got a good handling race truck, they're going to get back up front. This is the type of race track where there's no single ball racing. If you've got a good truck, good handling race truck, you're going to get back to the front. Look at how short these straightaways are. That is the back stretch, folks, from two to three. And you just round it off into a circle. There's the short shoot from three to four. Sedgwick having a look inside Rutman. And that white number 76 Spears Manufactory, 75 rather. Carter, uh, truck number 24 there, Scott Lagasse. Of course, he's known for road racing, but that's on the gas, off the gas, on the brakes, on the brakes. This place was suited to him, his best qualifying effort of the year. Lagasse started fourth in the DuPont number 24. Rick Corelli inside and turns Lagasse right around. And Lagasse gets into the fence and test the styrofoam blocks here that line the corners at Flemington. Looks like he got just the end of the styrofoam and a lot of the steel arm comb. Boy, that's a real shame. He had a real, real good run going. He was told me before the race he was just going to try to take it easy, maintain his position, not do anything wild or rash in the first half of the race. But uh, Corelli definitely got into it. Doug, tell us what these foam blocks, and you see just above the roof of that truck, there's some of the damage on the front. Of well, Scott Legacy. How have the foam blocks changed racing here? This is such a fast racetrack, and being all turn, when you get in trouble, you usually end up being sent right out into the wall. And this was probably the best thing they came up with since they paved this racetrack. And it saved probably a lot of injuries and saved a lot of damage to some of the, you know, race trucks and the race cars. Uh, it's, uh, they need to do something. It's such a fast racetrack. Legacy is okay, and you saw the foam blocks that line the corners here at Flemington, New Jersey. So Lagasse had his best start of the year, and it looks as if he has his worst finish. He is climbing out of the DuPont number 24 after contact with Rick Corelli. Got a car, but need an engine? Then come to Pep Boys, where you'll find a huge selection of over 1,200 quality engines for your car or light truck for as low as $699.99. Import or domestic, all have a 12-month unlimited mileage warranty. And you can charge it with your Pep Boys credit card and pay as little as $35 a month. So come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. You want to know how to choose a motor oil? Take a ride to your local garage and see what the mechanic puts into his own car. Fact is, of all the brands of motor oil, more ASC certified master technicians choose Valvoline for use in their own cars and trucks. So before you buy a motor oil for your car, know the one more top mechanics put into theirs. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. Dear Dave, when I saw Wendy's had a new smoky bacon cheeseburger, I said something about that sounds good to me. So I got them for the whole firehouse. It's delicious. Some guys especially like the three strips of hickory smoked bacon, some the two slices of smoked cheddar. But we all agreed when you put that on a quarter pound of fresh beef, that was some sandwich. Dave, come on by. We'll let you wear a big hat and ring the bell. Dear Jerry, thanks. Is Tuesday okay? Try Wendy's new smoky bacon cheeseburger. Wet roadways like this inspired Goodyear's newest all-season Aquatread radio, the all-new Goodyear Aquatread 2, with a deeper, wider aqua channel to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction and a new tread life compound. Goodyear gives you a 65,000-mile warranty, so you've got wet traction when you need it. The all-new 65,000-mile Aquatread 2, only from Goodyear. Today's exclusive coverage of the Stevens B.O. Genuine Car Parts 150 on TNN is brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. 
Scott Lagacy talking things over, the former SCCA Road Race champ, out of his truck after this incident. Watch, Watch Lagacy. 24. Watch Lagacy get into the corner there. Going into three, got just a little bit high. Corelli sneaks a look up under him. Then it looks like he's going to back out, but no, they touch. And uh, like Doug Hoffman told me while we were away there, you just can't touch here, can you, Doug? No, not at all. And uh, he started getting underneath them in that short street there. And then that fourth turn wall kind of comes out. So it didn't leave much room for either one of them. Different angle of the aftermath. You can see Legacy on the binders there trying to keep it off the wall. But it's so flat here, there's no banking to help slow the truck or to help turn the truck when it's in a spin there. Third angle. Yeah, he's already sideways there. Randy Pemberton is with Scott Legacy. Well, he's not thrilled, as you would imagine, Mike. Uh, Scott, what happened? Well, we got up off the bottom maybe just a little bit there between three and four. Um, by no means enough for Rick to get through. And I, I guess, it, you know, I thought it was a little early in the race to be doing that. But, you know, I'll see it on TV and I'll, I'll make a judgment then. But, you know, the DuPont 24 truck was looking pretty good there. We got around for qualifying. But uh, it's just no, no sense in starting, uh, starting a race at this, this way, that early in. Okay, tough break for you, Scott. Heartbreak for Scott Legacy here in New Jersey. It really is. It was his best start and uh, turns out to be his worst finish of the year. And uh, Glenn, you're right. I think his road racing experience served him well in carrying momentum on this racetrack, not trying to overpower the racetrack in qualifying. He had a great lap. Well, also, uh, you know, Scott called me earlier this week and he was talking about some of the things that have gone on during this year. And the conversation we had, he, he told me that, uh, you know, we take a look at the top ten here. He told me that, you know, I'm just going to try to take it easy. Uh, save the truck for the first half of the race and it served him well in qualifying you just can't get too aggressive on this place and that's what he did he had a good qualifying run and like you said he got up off the bottom just a little bit there but uh, Corelli took a look and uh, decided to make his way through there we're gonna go racing this time Ron Hornaday stole the lead from pole sitter Joe Rutman in the Mac tools Ford number 84 Ernie Irvin is here working with that crew and we're getting set for the restart 10 laps complete. They'll run 75 laps and then take the 10 minute halftime break. Under green. Good jump for Hornaday. Kobe Butler had a look under Steve Horton game midfield with that ortho truck, but nothing there. That was a great spot. Here they come back around. From Hornaday's lead truck. Chevrolet looking back at Joe Rutman's board and he's putting a little distance on Rutman who now starts to close. Boy, look at the Spears truck right up against Joe Rutman is Bill Sedgwick. Sedgwick loves a place like this. He's a very smooth, very non-aggressive driver. Oh, you oh. said? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he'll run over you if you give him a chance. <laughs> Deja vu all over again. Oh, oh, and Mike wow. Chase. That's Mike Chase. Went into the wall hard on the front straightaway. And really killed the left front corner of the number one truck. I'm not sure what happened to Chase. Hit one of the jersey barriers here on the inside of the front straightaway, but it's almost as if the truck turned straight left. When he hit that barrier, the truck jumped in the air and knocked down the left front tire. There is the barrier he hit right at the bottom of your screen. It, it did not move it. It was at that angle uh, to start with. Boy, Doug, you, uh, Doug, what is it about passing here that when you drop under somebody like that, as we'll see it here, either the truck coming down doesn't see him, doesn't give him room, or when you're used to racing at a place like this, how do you approach that situation differently, either truck? Well, it's tough. I mean, you just can't bump here. I mean, that was just, I don't even know if they even hit, but uh, he just got a little bit sideways, and that's it down here. The momentum just takes you around. Now, there is Chase. You see Chase gets hit from behind. He's trying to control the truck. He's completely out of control now. Watch it as it goes to the inside, hits that barrier, goes airborne. He did a lot of damage to the left front of that truck, Mike. Got nudged from behind and just never could get the handle on it. I think that was Bob Strait. There, there's Ernie Urban. Talking it over. Here's another look at it. See if we see the contact here, Doug. Yeah, he just, 
he got a little bump there, and, and that's all it takes down here is just a little bump in your... And watch Rutman save the truck. Watch him keep it off the wall here. He does a good job right here of spinning it around, just misses the wall. The difference was he got tagged earlier back in the corner than Legacy did. He had a little more room to save the truck. They're going to pick up Mike Chase's truck, take it back to the pit area, see if they can make repairs on the diehard number one. Second caution of the evening, folks. We'll be right back. They're the young guns of racing. And on their Sunday afternoon showdown, these next generation superstars start with the next generation diehard battery. The longest lasting Die Hard ever. The same Die Hard you can buy at Sears. Don't trust your Sunday drives to anything less. You know, that youngest Wallace brother might get to be a problem. Last year, sparks were flying as the Bush boys battled. First, Chad Little found out why they called him the Intimidator. And all Hermie Sattler could do was wait for the crunch. In the end, Kenny Wallace held on for his second win of the year. It's a prime time battle under the lights at Richmond. The NASCAR Bush Grand National Auto Light Platinum 250. September the 8th, 7.30, 6.30 Central on TNN Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer. Welcome back to Flemington, New Jersey. Pace truck has the field coming out of turn number four as we're under the second caution of the night. Joe Rutman, no damage on his truck as he spun down the front straightaway, just nicked the wall, took a little paint off the bumper cover. Ray Evernham is one of the drivers who used to run the modifieds here. Now, of course, he's Winston Cup crew chief for Jeff Gordon. And we asked him as a former driver here, how would you set up a truck to run Flemington? Again, I don't have a lot of experience with the trucks, but if I were going to take a Winston Cup car there, I would be prepared to make a car uh, drive on the loose side again, which means when, when you turn it, that it turns. Uh, Flemington tends to be a tight, high-speed track. Uh, you're going to want stiff right-side springs to keep the thing from falling over. Uh, you're going to need a stiff right rear spring to keep the thing turning. Uh, we used to run a lot off tire stagger with the modifiers to help them turn up off the corner. You don't have that luxury when you have a radial tire, so the guys are going to have to find some way of making that truck turn without having it loose getting in because, as, as I said, Flemington's very fast, and the last thing you want to be is loose getting into the corner there. Doug, agree or disagree? I disagree with I mean, I agree with everything Ray said. The only thing I would add to that is I'd have pulled all the gear out of the truck. Just take all the power away from the motor so you can just ride and ride and ride. Rick Corelli told me earlier today that the, he didn't feel like, there you see uh, Ray Everham's modified car that he ran here in Flemington, New Jersey. Hey, he won some races? Yes, he did. He's a pretty good modified shoe. Yeah, he was. Pretty good chief mechanic, too. Yes, crew he chief. But anyway, what I was going to say, Corelli told me that you only use about 60% throttle here, that if you try to get in the gas all the way, it's so flat here, it just spins the tires, Doug. Yeah, you don't ever get the thing flat out. Randy? And, uh, check with Randy. One of the reasons they put the uh, styrofoam out there was because of a bad crash Ray had here. He took yes. a real heavy crash coming off the fourth turn there. And that was one of the reasons they come out with that styrofoam idea. Before we go to the restart, here's Randy. You know, as we get ready to go green, I talked with a few drivers, or a few crew chiefs, about the sun. There's an awful big glare coming out of turn four here. It all depends on how much tape they have at the top of the windshield to uh, reduce some of that glare. As far as Joe Rutman's team, they said that was not the problem, but uh, there could be some other guys wishing they had a little bit more tape on the top of that windshield. Right there, you're driving straight into the sun as you come into turn number four. 25 truck Jack Sprague is now in that Budweiser Chevy. Rick Hendrick truck. Dennis Connor, the crew chief. And there is Mike Skinner trying to chase him down. And the Dodge right behind of Dennis Setzer. Yeah, this, this place was well suited to Dennis Setzer. He grew up on bull rings like this, and uh, that Dodge truck has been strong everywhere they've gone. Setzer's going to give it a run tonight. Looking back at that ram front end of Setzer's Dodge. Running a little higher in the corner. Then is Mike Skinner's number three. I got behind Dennis in practice a couple times there, Mike, and he was a little bit about two grooves or two lanes higher on the race track than anybody out there. It seemed to be working well for him, though. He's having no trouble keeping up with Skinner, starting to put a little pressure on him. Doug, will that free the truck up to run a little higher here or no? Actually, no. I usually free my car up by getting closer to the guardrail where nobody's actually putting the rubber down yet, so... 
Maybe he's a little loose, and that's why he's up there. Sets are in number 30, that red Dodge. As they try to run down the 25 of Jack Sprague. That will be the race for fourth place. There's Toby Butler in seventh. Butler did get by Porton Jay right before that last car. And here's Joe Rutman trying to come back. Rutman takes to the inside underneath Michael Dockett. Picks his way up a spot and begins to move on Ken Allen. Mikey's already back up to 13th place in the running order, so he's wasting no time getting back up front. Ken Allen in the onset Chevrolet. Gives Rutman racing room on the bottom, and the back tools forward moves up another notch. Dave Rosendi's in that pack as well. And the Exide Battery's number seven. Ooh, Rutman had a real handful right there. He got a little sideways. Mike, you see the Mac Tools uh, sponsorship on the side of the truck there. We'll take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Dale Jarrett. He and his Mac Tools Ford won the uh, Bush Brand National Race today in Michigan. He'll lap all but the next four cars. <laughs> really, really strong today. Hey, you see, that's really starting to put some pressure on Mike Skinner now. It looks like Setzer is getting out of the corner and up high on the racetrack quicker than Skinner, who's, who's letting his truck work up out of the bottom of the racetrack a little, a little easier. He might be finding his truck up a little bit by running down low there, but uh, if he's got a good handle in the race truck, he's going to get by him. All right, second place battle here. Rick Corelli looks to the inside of the 75 of Bill Sedgwick. Let's check with Randy. Well, you know, you're talking about Mike Skinner. I just talked to Will Lynn before they dropped the green flag of this race. He's the GM of this truck operation for Richard Childress. And he said, this is absolutely the worst we have run in any race this year. He said, the only way we make it to the front, and we may, is if the weather happens to change this. But what he meant by that was the fact that when the sun starts to go down, they may have been so far out of shape that they get in shape. But they're not quite sure. It was the worst they qualified all year. Just could not get the handle to that uh, good wrench machine. But... Uh, they're going to work on it at halftime. Well, that's wishing and hoping. And you see now, the entire front straightaway is in the shadows right here down to turn number one. The back stretch still in the sunlight. Boy, Corelli is really working hard trying to get around uh, Bill Sutton's 75 truck. Watch Corelli hug it right down to the bottom. And when he turns the truck right here, watch him try to get under. Says that he just doesn't have the, the ability to turn the truck enough and get in the gas to make that move on it. Lapping past Jerry Glanville, the number 81. Sometimes that's an adventure. And a little bit more slow traffic. Now they're clear to run down the leader. 33 laps complete coming up on the first quarter mark of this 150 lapper. We'll be right back to New Jersey. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. If I wasn't here, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it. These people just witnessed an amazing demonstration. We put this Duraloop treated engine through the ultimate torture test. We drained all the oil, all the water, then flooded it with a fire hose. It kept on running because Duraloop protects your engine like no other product can. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. Now, let Duraloop make a believer out of you. Duraloop, peace of mind in a bottle. It happens in the hospital. It happens at home. It's the onset of heartburn. It's an attack of acid indigestion. For these stomach flare-ups, the number one choice of hospitals is Maalox. Hospitals know that nothing works faster to rush heartburn relief. Now you know it too. Fast-acting Maalox. Hospitals can count on it for speed. And that's just what you need. Maalox, the first choice for hospitals, the fast choice for home. In fast-acting Maalox tablets too. If you live for the feeling, the moment has come. It's an all-new season. Buckmasters, Sunday, 1.30 p.m., 12.30 Central on TNN Outdoors. King's Wholesale Florist is a flower and plant supermarket. Stop in today and enjoy our wide assortment of cut flowers from around the world. We also have blooming plants and green plants in our impressive greenhouse. 
To enjoy this do-it-yourselfer supermarket, visit King's Wholesale Florist and take advantage of some of the lowest prices in town. King's Wholesale Florist in Bradenton. Come in today. Hi, I'm Floyd Culver from Culver's Termite and Pest Control. It's termite season. Termites are swarming. If you should have a problem or think you might have a problem, please give us a call. I've been in business for 25 years, and we have a lifetime limited warranty on all termite work. It's termite season. Termites are swarming. If you think you have a problem with termites or other pests, please give us a call. Fireworks tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. The Amico Knoxville National World of Outlaws Sprint Car Racing live here on TNN. And Steve Kinzer has to come through the C main and the V main to get in the show. It should be fun tonight. Now, here at Flemington, New Jersey, we're under the third caution of the night. Mike, the caution was for Butch Miller there. He's got a flat left rear tire. He stopped the truck coming off the second turn over there, right against the guardrail on the bottom, brought out the caution. Now he's got it going again, but you can see the left rear tire there. Boy, that's a tough break for Butch. He's third place in the points. Question will be if Miller went a lap down, uh, if the 98 truck went a lap down when he spun. So Randy Pemberton is there as Miller comes to pit lane. Absolutely peeled away the left rear. They're going to take about five guys to help lift this thing up. No jack as we see it. Where? Oh, okay, there it is in the back of the truck. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't see that too often, but there it is. New, new skin going on the left side, right, over, right underneath the Revesta sign. This is the sponsor on Butch Miller's automobile. Not a problem. Change it. Down the way. the lap. Yes, he did. Down at least one and perhaps two laps now. I think by my count, Mike, he lost two laps. I think he yep. lost a lap on the racetrack because he sat over there for a while until the caution came out. Now, while we were away, there was a, a change at second position. Ron Hornaday had been working and working on Bill Sedgwick's number 75, and finally he got some race room. Well, it's like he set him up just right, though. He finally got the thing slowed down enough to make that turn off, off the corner there. I'll tell you, it looks like he's got a good working truck. I think, I think right now that Corelli has the fastest truck on the racetrack. Before that caution came out for Butch Miller, Corelli was working through traffic and gaining steadily on Ron Hornaday. I think Hornaday's going to have his hands full when this thing goes back to green. Rick Corelli looking for his first win of the season. He finished third at Tucson and at Indianapolis. Third caution of the night. And Ron Hornaday has now led 700 laps this season. Now there's the 38 track of Sammy Swindell has just gone one down. How did Sammy spend the day preparing for tonight's super truck race? This just in. There's Sammy at Knoxville, Iowa. They've been racing out there all week for one of the richest prizes and most prestigious victories in all of sprint car racing, the Knoxville Nationals. And you'll see the finale tonight live on TNN. The instant this race is over, Sammy gets in a helicopter, heads for a private jet, goes right back to Knoxville, and at 10 p.m. Eastern time, you'll see him strapped into his Sprinter. Back to green at 43 laps. Good restart by Ron Hornaday there. He gained uh, two or three truck links on Torelli, but I don't think Torelli's going to have any trouble chasing him there, guys. Oh, three wide, Toby Butler there with Dennis Setzer. They do sort it out. Here comes Sedgwick, who did not get that great a restart. John Nemechek, who spun all by himself but did not bring out the caution while we were in commercial. Nemechek spun while battling uh, Joe Ruffin for the 10th spot. Ruffin has moved back to 10. He's got flat spotted tires, though, and he can't change those until the halfway break. NASCAR's rule is the tire must be losing air for you to be allowed to change it. Oh, boy, Nemechek. Wow, what a mess. <laughs> yeah, but not nearly as bad as it would have been if he run into a steel retaining wall. This one will bring out the caution. John Nemechek, the younger of the racing brothers from Lakeland, Florida. In the Delco Remy, number 87. Ending up with uh, perhaps repairable damage. You see, he's able to continue. Not going to get a lot of air on that rear spoiler. And the styrofoam blocks do their job. Man, that makes me just want to go out there and, like, crunch this stuff up. You, know? you see it flying everywhere, you want to break pieces off. I've seen you drive, and you would. <laughs> I'm talking about with my hands. I know. Watch Nemechek get way up out of the groove. The back end came around. Pow! 
It's snowing in August in New Jersey. But you're right, not near as much damage to the truck. Oh, no. And he hit the uh, metal guardrail there. I'll tell you, on a Saturday night, some nights it does look like it's snowing with the lights out and all the styrofoam flying. It's something <laughs> to see. And Nemechek, instead of being on the hook and perhaps headed for the meat wagon, he's able to drive into the pits and get that truck, hopefully, repaired. We're under caution at 47 laps. We'll be right back to Flemington, New Jersey on TNN after this. It's chasing after something you may never catch. It's hit or miss. And some days it's more miss. It's disappointing. It's dangerous. It's never, ever boring. In other words, it's exactly like a cowboy's life. At Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. Wrangler, the Western original. We put these glass walls on the course at Road Atlanta to demonstrate the wet traction and performance of the Goodyear Eagle Aqua Tread. Racing-inspired dual aqua channels sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. Broad shoulders add aggressive grip for precise cornering. Its unique tread compound helps you stick to the road. You get the performance of an Eagle, the wet traction of an Aqua Tread. Eagle Aqua Tread, only from Goodyear. Free flea spray, free flea Now you can get free flea spray and pet shampoo free when you call 1-800-Terminex for new service spray. and say, free flea spray, five times fast. Hello, Terminex. Flea, flea spray. It's that easy. At Chevrolet, we're not just out here winning. We're testing suspensions, developing more powerful engines, and learning more about aerodynamics. Because if you want to bring more race-winning technology to the street than any other car company, sometimes you have to work weekends. That's genuine Chevrolet. Take 5,000 horsepower down to quarter mile in less than five seconds. Yeah. What do you get? NHRA on TNN Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer. Today's exclusive coverage of the Stevensville Genuine Car Parts 150 on TNN is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. 13 trucks on the lead lap at Flemington, New Jersey. Hornaday, the leader. Corelli, Sedgwick, Sprague, Skinner, Setzer, Butler, Fortgay, Rutman, and Bliss, the top 10. Next lap will be racing. The other nice thing about those styrofoam blocks is they clean up very quickly. We're ready to go back to racing. John Nemechek, though, has parked his truck. From Ron, from Ron Hornaday. That was fast. I was, I was impressed with how quickly they replaced the styrofoam that was broken, got the other one in place, and blew the earth those little uh, snowflakes right off the track. They're ready to go racing again. A lot faster than you can fix that truck. I believe you, Glenn, they get a lot of practice on a Saturday night. <laughs> Tear that stuff up on a regular basis. That's right. What does that styrofoam feel like when you hit it? It, it does help some. You know, it, it, when you hit that hard, it doesn't feel like it helped, but it really does. When you bring the car back in the pits, you can see that it's not as much damage if it wasn't there. Talking about cost-effective racing, that helps. We are under green once again. 51 laps complete. Hornaday, the leader, dispenses with Swindell. He got a much better restart than Rick Corelli. Yeah, Corelli stuck with the lap traffic. Now you see Sammy Swindell on the inside of him there, and that's where, where Rick wants to be, right on the bottom of the track. There's Sedgwick trying to edge and tiptoe right around Swindell, and does so. trying to move up on the outside and that red number 84 Ford. Dennis Setzer in the red number 30 Dodge moving against 37 Bob Strait just ahead of Mike Skinner. Well, you see Toby Butler now is under Dennis Setzer trying to take that position away from him. As I said, the preferred line is on the inside and that's what Butler has right now. That's a heck of a race going on right there. You see uh, Mike Skinner on the outside of Bob Strait trying to keep straight a lap down. Butler and Setzer side by side. Bit of a squeeze there, but Setzer will use Straight's lap truck as a pick and find himself some clean racetrack right behind Dennis Setzer. 
gnarly pack there. Bliss takes it way deep inside, <laughs> trying to make it three wide. That did not work for the number two. Boom. Ultra uh, construct. Oh, boy. Point, uh, point got into the bubble. And 65, Ken Allen gets hard into the nose of Steve Portengay's coffee critic, number 83. Traffic back if you see some fluid on the track there left from Ken Allen's truck, too. When all that traffic bunched up there, Butler had to get out of the gas just a minute, and Portengay tried to make a move under it. You can see the right front there. That's when uh, Ken Allen hit him, but Portengay just nudged Toby Butler and got them both out of shape. Portengay went up into the marble, spun it around, and got whacked. Doug, most of this racetrack's 80 feet wide, but oftentimes it's just not enough. No, them guys did a good job of, uh, that could have been a lot worse. The guys did a good job avoiding it. Watch this now, you see Butler, he's up on the outside, having to slow down for straight, boom. Portengay nudges him just a little bit. Now watch Butler go all the way to the top of the racetrack, but Portengay's the one that got the worst out of shape. Now you see Joe Rutman, look at him take advantage of this. Mike did, Bliss just missed. Did uh, Rutman get into the back of Portengay? Possibly. I didn't see that. That's a good point, Mike. Well, you're, you're good at this. Here we can see it. No, no he's up. He no, was he did up not. He was, Toby. Yeah, yeah, he was too high. Yeah, boy, he does a great job right here, or somebody does it for him. <laughs> Well, one of the problems here is if you lift, if you lift real hard going into a turn, the car, truck will just loosen right up. Yeah. And again, that's where you're driving straight into the sun. Look at the fluid glistening on the track there from Ken Allen's truck. Portengay was able to continue, but uh, as you see now, he is coming down pit road. Want to go for the restart? That had to have done some damage to uh, Steve Portengay's coffee critic truck there. 57 laps complete. There's your top 10 as we line up for the restart. As close as Butler came to disaster there, he only dropped two spots, so uh, really wasn't that bad. Morton Gay gets back onto the racetrack without losing a lap. Yeah, he and just came in and had the guys check the truck over, make sure that uh, nothing was against that right front tire there, but looks like it was a pretty clean tear. And John Nemechek has completed repairs. He is back in the race from the Delco Remy number 87. There is the onset number 65 of Ken Allen, punctured radiator take him out of the race at least for now from Ron Hornaday looking back at second place Rick Corelli that wasn't a jump it was a rocket launch I think that Corelli would like to have a monitor in there so he can see that cover and once again Corelli stuck on the outside of Sammy Swindell Swindell still the first truck that he's one lap down he clears him as they get into three as does Bill Sedgwick I don't know what letting him go by there. I don't know what kind of second gear Hornaday's got in that truck, but it's a stump puller. That was a that was an Earnhardt looking kind of restart, wasn't it? Yeah. Pretty good. That's got to be a good feeling to know that when you restart, you're going to get yourself a four to five truck leak advantage every time. I don't think there's anything Pirelli really can do with it, whether he anticipates it or not. Look at the glare on the windshield of Mike Skinner as you come down the straightaway between turns three and four. Working around Bob Strait once again. The target expediting 37. Now through no fault of his, Bob Strait was the guy that backed everybody up a while ago. He was down on the inside, giving them plenty of room to work. He just backed traffic up, and that's what happened in that last uh, last accident report. He got into Toby Butler. Good run for Mike Bliss and uh, Jimmy Smith's ultra wheels number two. That purple and white truck coming hard right behind Skinner. Bliss was another of those guys along with Rutman that took advantage of that wreck. Drove right through it, didn't touch a thing. Moved himself up, himself up a couple of notches in the rundown. That's Bliss right behind Skinner. Meanwhile, up front, Corelli is right on the back bumper of Ron Hornaday, your leader. He's closed it right back up and erased all that advantage from the restart. Look how well Corelli's truck works down low. That's got to be a big advantage, Doug. I'll tell you, I've, I've been watching uh, Ron, and he keeps getting higher and higher going through three and four. To me, that's a sign that the truck's starting to get loose, and uh, there's not going to be a whole lot he can do to stop the wreck from going by. Twelve laps to halftime. Here's your lead battle. Papa John Chevy and the Total Petroleum Chevy. Pirelli takes it up high, continues to look on the high side of Hornaday this time. I think Corelli's messing with him there. I think he's <laughs> messing with him. Think he can take him up there. Now watch him look at him down low again. That's about as low as you can go. 
They're just about scraping the paint off the guardrail on the inside of the corner. And you saw that time, Hornaday did not sweep the truck to the outside between one and two, but kept it down to protect that low groove. He knows where that challenge is coming from. Yeah, I imagine he's got a spotter in his ear telling him, hey, Corelli is strong down low. you got to keep it down. And here comes Sedgwick in the 75. Ooh, there's the move on the outside. Ten laps to halftime. It's great racing here. I know that Corelli Strutt is a little bit faster right now, but it's not fast enough to go ahead and make that move. He's laying back just a little bit now. I think he'll close up the gap here very shortly and try another move on him. But uh, he might be sitting there thinking, oh, we've got halftime coming up. Let's just, let's just ride this out so we can... Uh, Adjust the truck just a little more at the halftime break, then I'll see what it got for in the second half. Let's go back a little further. Toby Butler in the ortho number 21 4. Dennis Setzer in the Taylor Todd Dodge number 30. They've been battling back and forth and were side by side a lap ago as they close in on Sammy Swindell. Dave Resendez is right up there as well in the number seven, the Exide Ford. Butler having a little trouble putting the lap on, uh, on Sammy Swindell. I hope he doesn't get impatient here. Just a few laps left in the halfway mark. And that may just be it, Glenn. Six laps, and they'll take a halftime break. Then they'll reline back up. Lap trucks to the inside. So coming up on halftime here in about five laps with a dozen or so trucks on the lead lap as the sun sets in Flemington, New Jersey. You see Butch Miller has pulled up behind Dennis Setzer there. Butch is the number 98 truck just coming into your picture right there. He is two laps down. He did lose two laps. That has been right. confirmed uh, when he had the flat tire over there. Touch and go there. Back at ninth place. And back up front. Traffic is the only thing that has kept Rick Corelli from chewing away at the bumper of Ron Hornaday Jr. Corelli would like to have that $1,000 uh, bonus for leading it halfway. He hasn't had one of those this year. I know that's got to be his mind. Look at the smoke coming off of the fourth gate there. Looks like the brake was dragging a little bit. Yeah, he's just trying to hang on to halfway. He is the last, was the last truck on the lead lap. He's now one lap down. Doug, if you're Rick Corelli right now in second place, what can you do with that truck? Well, I would keep working the bottom if I was him. I'd stay right on and stay brutal, but like Glenn said, what's the point, you know? They got the other half of the race to run, so no sense of getting in trouble. But if I if my truck was a little bit better, I'd like to scrub my stuff right now. Well the point is that thousand dollars and he's going for it. Not that time. <laughs> Good job by Corelli getting out of that thing. Uh oh Lamble. The coach. No caution. He's cautioned now. He's driving it away. Caution at lap 74. Make that at lap 75. So we'll check with the NASCAR officials, but it's to see whether or not they paid out that halfway bonus money at lap 75, because we are halfway. Yeah, I think they're going to go ahead and count that as the uh, as a run to halfway, Mike. It's uh. We'll get a ruling on that as Jerry Glanville tries to restart his Ford. Doug Rickert, crew chief for Ron Hornaday Jr. Calling the shots. As they will come to pit road for the halftime break next time by. You oh, see the red flag waving there. So it's halftime here at Flemington, New Jersey. Kind of a new experience for the fans here, but a regular occurrence on the Super Truck Tour. We'll visit with Randy on pit road after this. Wet roadways like this inspired Goodyear's newest all-season Aquatread radio, the all-new Goodyear Aquatread 2, with a deeper, wider aqua channel to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction and a new tread life compound. Goodyear gives you a 65,000-mile warranty, so you've got wet traction when you need it. The all-new 65,000-mile Aquatread 2, only from Goodyear. I learned to change oil with my dad out in the driveway when I was little. We always went to Walmart for just about anything. I buy my oil by the case at Walmart. I buy Quaker State. 
I use 10W30 in the winter and 10W40 in the summer. I have a drain pan that the oil goes right into. I put the lid on and take it back to Walmart. It's real easy. They recycle it for me. My husband bought me some ramps for Christmas so that I would change his oil when I change my oil. Change his oil? He must be kidding. Too hot in your car? Don't sweat it. Now at Pep Boys, get a cool deal on our air conditioning quick check for just $19.99. Our AC quick check, only $19.99. Come to Pep Boys now. Listen up, Sprint Car fans. It's the biggest night of the year. And these winged warriors are ready to crank it up. TNN Motorsports presents live coverage under the lights of Knoxville, where top names like Dave Blaney, Steve Kinzer, and Andy Hillenberg will be kicking up the dirt. It's the World of Outlaws, Amico, Knoxville Nationals. Live tonight, 10 p.m. 9 Central on TNN Motorsports. Sunday on TNN Outdoors. No matter what you think of his taste in hats. It's worth the walk. Bill Dance sure knows how to catch him. Bill Dance Outdoors. Sunday on TNN Outdoors. Welcome back to the Stevens Beal Genuine Car Parts 150 in Flemington, New Jersey. Mike Joy with Glenn Jarrett. Doug Hoffman, four-time track champion here, has joined us. And Randy Pemberton is on pit road. Let's get well, out of we're Randy. Gonna, we're going to try and get a word with Rick Corelli, who is uh, really working over Horn today there. He's conferring with his crew at the moment. The changes that I've seen so far on the six truck, uh, just four skins. They've also changed the radio. Of course, now they're, they're talking a little bit of a strategy. Uh, he certainly likes to go for that halfway money. Hate to barge in here. We'll try and we'll try and get a quick word with Rick. Rick, uh, how's the truck? It looks pretty good. I tell you what, if I can get a run and get up in front of Ron, I think we can check out. But uh, up here at Flemington, it's so tight coming off these corners, you got to use a, the whole racetrack to get around. We're a little pushy right now. We're gonna make some adjust, air pressure adjustment, and you know, hopefully we got something for him in the second half. Okay, so no other changes besides air pressure and some new rubber. That's about it. I mean, the way this Total Petroleum Chevrolet is running, I'll tell you what. Uh, I mean, my hat's off to everybody. It's out there driving on the screen. Okay, good luck. Look good so far. We've already had a couple of trucks into these styrofoam blocks that line the Armco barriers. Randy talked with Paul Cool, the president of Flemington, about these barriers and why he uses them. We had a lot of problems with injuries, neck and neck injuries, and really heavy damage to the cars. So uh, when that happened, we had to do something. There was a track in New York State, only one track in the country that I know of was using these. So. We found their source and we purchased them for here and it has worked exceptionally well. And not only in driver injuries, but also in reducing car damage. We've had a lot of cars that looked by the impact that they would be severely damaged and yet they had minor repairs and were back out to race. Hmm. What is the philosophy behind them? Obviously they, they absorb some type of energy. Well, they will and you'll see today if anybody hits them that it's just like a snowstorm. In other words, depending on how hard they hit them, they might break off a small piece, but they can explode. or it can, And it takes up all the impact. In other words, you know you're going to hit. You know there's going to be something, but you don't hit anything solid like a, a, a metal fence. Paul Cool knew a good idea when he saw one, and credit the Lancaster, New York Speedway, where they run modifieds, uh, for innovating the foam block barriers. A look at Mike Skinner. They have had the left side of that truck way up in the air and the hood up and look like they're making a lot of changes. Randy will check on those when we come back to Flemington right after this. This is the desert. And these are Chevy trucks. Now, the only thing growing out here is our reputation. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Chevy trucks, like a rock. These automotive professionals just witnessed an amazing demonstration. It this? works! Oh my God. We ran this 500 horsepower engine after draining all the oil. Before we drain the oil, we added just one bottle of a revolutionary new engine treatment, Duralu. By bonding to the metal inside your engine, Duralu protects like no other regular oil or additive can, giving you better mileage and longer engine life. Duralu, in a class by itself. Thursday night, the TNN Salute to Motorsports at Opryland continues. 
Charlie and Lorianne welcome NHRA drag racing king of speed, Kenny Bernstein, to Music City tonight. Plus, NASCAR Winston Cup driver, John Andretti. And look for your favorite racing superstars all next week on Music City Tonight and the Ralph Emery Show. It's full throttle fun as the TNN salute to motorsports at Opryland continues. Welcome back to Flemington, New Jersey. The Stevensville Genuine Car Parts 150. TNN's Highway tra Transportation provided by Cedar Ridge RV Center in Branchville, New Jersey. They feature Winnebago. Call Joe and the folks at 1-800-988-4884 to see why Cedar Ridge is the choice of champions. And for information on Featherlight, the official trailer of NASCAR, call 1-800-800-1230. Down to Pit Road and Randy. Well, Ron Horn today and the guys uh, putting the net up, and I'll try and squeeze one in here. Ron, uh, truck's running good. What about it? Can you hold these guys off? I don't know. Rick Crowley's pretty tough. Uh, we're pretty tight. We made a change. We'll see what we can do. Okay, that's it. When it's halftime, it's halftime. And when it's over, it's over. They're lining them up. Now, let's go to break, and uh, we'll be back with more of the Stephen Beals Genuine Car Parts 150 right after this. NASCAR fans, don't give up racing excitement at the end of the season. Join us December 4th through 8th on the Big Red Boat as TNN presents the NASCAR Family Cruise to benefit the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary. Sail into the Caribbean with top NASCAR drivers. There'll be NASCAR festivities and activities. Plus, stops in the Bahamas and kids fun with Warner Brothers Looney Tunes characters. Call now for five days and four nights of non-stop food, fun, and high seas hospitality. It's NASCAR on America's number one family cruise, the Starship Oceanic, leaving Fort Canaveral, Florida, December 4th. Out there, all that matters is the challenge of the cast. The perfect presentation, the perfect lure. And then it happens. Reel in the magic, Saturday and Sundays on TNN Outdoors. It was my car. Now keep in mind, every time we get a Buick car, it's her car. Buick Century. Uh, a real nice car. Uh, what I love about the car most is the ride. I really enjoy the ride. Of course, then again, once putting on the brakes, uh, and maybe having to maneuver around an obstacle that just goes right around it without any problem. It's been real good, uh, well enough for us to stay in the Buick family for over 10 years. Summerfield, Bradenton's premier retirement residence, invites you to enjoy a lifestyle of luxury and peace of mind. Freed from the burdens of household management, your life at Summerfield can open up a world of new friendships, new opportunities, and renewed energy. At Summerfield, with our affordable monthly rates, you can enjoy the company of interesting neighbors, participate in one of our many planned activities, or savor your privacy, secure in the knowledge that assistance is just down the hall. Find out for yourself why so many people are making Summerfield their home. To you by Auto Week, America's only enthusiast weekly. Knoxville, Iowa. Here's the lineup for the A Main. Mark Kinzer on the pole. Danny the Dude, Lasoski, Sammy Swindell, Johnny Herrera, Terry McCarl. Remember, Steve Kinzer will have to win the C. The B Main lines up like this Jeff Swindell, Jeff Shepard, Paul McMahon, Lance DeWeese, and Randy Tyner. Two from this group transferring into the A. Marlon Jones, Kevin Huntley, Tim Munson, Rod George, and Tony Morrow from Des Moines line up in the C. Today at Michigan in the Bush race. Green to checker. These were the only five cars on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett, second win of the year. Mark Martin finishing second. Johnny Benson, the point leader, sixth. While Chad Little finished two laps down. And tomorrow, of course, the Winston Cup race. Bobby Labonte is on the pole. Call 1-800-445-3880 now for a 52-week subscription to Auto Week at only $19.95, lowest price ever. Every week, Auto Week, first with all the inside news of racing, personalities, driving impressions, everything. Call now for Auto Week, 1-800-445-3800. This offer ends Monday. Randy? 
Caught up with the gentleman that is behind the title sponsorship of this race, Stephen Beal. What do you think about this? You got a great smile on your face. You got a packed crowd here. Are you having any fun? We're having a great time this year. I hope. I hope this year and next year we do the same thing over again. Have you been to many races in the past? A few races. Where does this one rank so far? A lot of action out there. This is the best that we've had. It's a lot of fun. Okay, congratulations on your support of the series. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Eleven trucks are on the lead lap as we line up for the restart. Hornaday, Corelli, and Sedgwick, Sprague, Skinner, and Bliss, Rutman, Butler, Setzer, and Resendiz, and also Michael Dockin. Those 11 are the lead lap. One lap down, Sammy Swindell, Bob Strait, John Kinder, Reback, Horton Gay, Butch Miller is posted now at least one lap down. Jerry, he is two laps down. Jerry Glanville, uh, Jimmy Dick in the 79, and Frank Davis right now running 20th. John Nemechek is back out there. Kenny Allen, Mike Teague behind the wall. Mike Chase returns to the race here at halftime. And Scott Legacy, the first truck out. NASCAR fans can make cruise history from Cape Canaveral to the Bahamas December 4 to 7 on the Big Red Boat, sponsored by TNN and the Winston Cup Wives Auxiliary. Drivers confirmed to appear include Kyle Petty, Ernie Irvin, Todd Bodine, Ted Musgrave, and Steve Grissom. And all the proceeds will benefit the Winston Cup Drivers Wives Auxiliary. Call the number on your screen for more information. Mike, during that uh, interview that uh, Randy did with Rick Corelli, Corelli told us that the truck was a little pushy. And he was the only one that was able to stay as low on the racetrack as he could. I'm going to be interested to see, looking forward to see if they can improve that truck. If he can get that thing to turn down just a little better, I don't think Hornaday or anybody's got anything for that truck. He Doug, was fast. Doug Hoffman, a little pushier isn't a bad thing, is it? No, not here. If you're loose, you've got to hang on. It really tires you out. I'd rather have a tight truck than, than a loose one. On the gas. On new tires. On the green. And Hornaday gets a big break by putting a lap truck of Portengay between himself and Rick Torelli. Three wide back in the field, turn three, but it all sorts out. Back under green. Well, I'll take you on that bonus for the $1,000 for the uh, halfway leader. Since the caution fell at the halfway part, they're going to run five green laps. The guy that leads the fifth green lap will be the winner of that $1,000 bonus. Hornaday looks like he's got it in the bag right now. All right, now, Randy, during the break, they had the left side up in the air on Skinner's truck and the hood up. What did they do? Well, that's exactly right, Mike. What they did was they added a half of rubber to the left front spring. And what that's going to do is try and loosen them up a little bit somewhat, but they don't want them to get too loose getting in. That's what they're concerned about. They're hoping that it's going to correct the problem just a little bit. Seems like he's getting around just a little better than he was before, but we'll have to wait here. This race stretches out a few laps. Skinner has six wins. That leads the lead. Furthest back, he started to win with Phoenix. 16 came up front to win it. Traffic looking out his front windshield. You still see just a little bit of a, of a glare from the sun as they enter turn three over there. After that, it's okay. The rest of the racetrack, the whole front stretch, of starting on turn four, is in the shadows. So, so they move out the sun when they go in the back stretch. You see the difference in the light out the front glass of Skinner's truck there. Mike Skinner has led nine of the 13 races so far this year. He has not led tonight. You know, if you make, I guess, Doug, even if you make a little bit of improvement on your vehicle on this, uh, on this racetrack, it still has to be pretty significant moving to the racetrack to get by those other trucks. I mean, a little bit of improvement won't help. You got to have a major break to get under the guy. Yeah, you got to, you got to be, you got to be going better to get by that guy, and uh, it's showing now. Well, if you had to pick, would you be, would you rather be better getting into the corner, or coming off the corner here? Which is hard to say since it's all corner. It's all corner. So <laughs> if you're good, you got to be good on crash up in three and four. Important game. Hard into the blocks this time. He has impaled that styrofoam yeah, on the front fender. They can, they, they can make a lot of coffee cups out of that now. <laughs> that is amazing, though. As hard as he hit, he just cranks it up, drives it away. California brings out the seventh caution here at Let's lap take a look 81. At it here. 
And look, oh, he's getting lapped, and Bill Sedgwick gets into the side of him and sends him spinning. And remember, Portingay, watch this. Boom. Major snowstorm. <laughs> Need some coffee in a snowstorm like that. But Portingay was the first truck that was one lap down. He was trying to let that lead driver get by him. He held Sedgwick up just a little bit. Bill got a nose under him, and they got together. I'd like, a, after the break, I'd like to see him hit that styrofoam again, and I hope every short track promoter in America is watching. The 94 Southwest Tour champion into the fence, Portengay, will be right back. Wet roadways like this inspired Goodyear's newest all-season Aquatread radio, the all-new Goodyear Aquatread 2, with a deeper, wider aqua channel to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction and the new Treadlife compound. Goodyear gives you a 65,000 mile warranty, so you've got wet traction when you need it. The all new 65,000 mile Aquatread 2, only from Goodyear. You've got 700 horsepower trucks. You've got craftsman tools. You've got heart pounding, bone rattling, eardrum busting speed. What else do you need for a perfect Sunday afternoon? The all new NASCAR Super Truck Series, brought to you by Craftsman. The only tools tough enough for super trucks. We didn't get into super truck racing just to add another trophy to our collection or to add another 15 minutes to our fame. And we didn't do it just to show up the competition. Okay, maybe we did. Chevy trucks, like a rock. Eric Benjamin on TV's fastest half hour this week. We'll catch you up to date on the Winston Cup and IndyCar point chases. Plenty of short track stuff to everything in between on TV's fastest half hour, Race Day. All you need to know about motorsports, Race Day. Tomorrow, 11.30 a.m., 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on TNN Motorsports. Hope you all come out to Offrey Land and join the TNN Salute to Motorsports August 24th through September 4th. Driver appearances, merchandise exhibits all throughout the theme park. For information, call Monday through Friday, 615-889-6611. Let's show you this one more time, folks. If you race at a short track or if you happen to promote a short track, these styrofoam walls, they do their job. Once again, you see Sedgwick get into Portgate. Now, Portgate's a lap down. Cedric decided it was time to go. The lead guys were getting away from him, and he put his nose on him and got into Steve. Cedric lost a couple positions because of that, but, uh, you know, we talked about Port and Gay. It, it's too bad that that happened, but he's a front runner. He came out. He's a Southwest Tour defending champion. He used to run it up front, but when you're a lap down, hey, you've got to give those guys room. They're not going to wait on you to get out of the way. Well, they feel a little more styrofoam, and, and Dees is off of the coffee critic number 83. The uh, Tano's family, who Owns that truck, also sponsors it. And so Portengate trying to show well. He was also Rookie of the Year in 92 in the Southwest Tour, as well as being the defending champion. Up in the corner, you'll see uh, Ron Hornaday's footwork as we go back to green here at lap 85. Modulating the pedal there. A little, looks like just a little tap of the brake occasionally to set the truck. Yeah, he's not using it. Yeah, a little bit. Hornaday again, quick with the restart. Well, whatever he's doing there, he's doing it well because he's pulling away from the field again. The adjustment they made at halftime looked to be the best fix that anybody gave their trucks. Let's go down to Randy. He's got something to add. Not a whole lot, Glenn. Uh, a couple of pounds of air pressure and a couple of tires and about a half around the wedge. That's what Doug Riker told me. So uh, that's about it. The thing is proving real, real good right now. They had a little problem with the tire wear on the inside of the right front. They think it might be a camber problem, but uh, right now it seems to be okay. Now you see Corelli starting to sneak into the picture there just a little bit. 
once again things get sorted out, Corelli has open race track. He starts closing the gap. And on a long run, I like the way Corelli's truck has been working. Yeah, I think that's the big difference. We saw that toward the end. Doug pointed out that you know it looks like one of those tires were getting were giving up a little bit there. He started to move up a little on the racetrack at the end of the long green flag run. Now, you see that traffic. How can you have one leader and one lead change? It's easy. Hornaday has led every lap, but he did not start on the pole, so that counts, if you will, as a lead change, taking the lead away from pole sitter Joe Rutman. Facts are facts, man. Just the facts, man. Rod Hornaday in the Papa John's Pizza Chevrolet, leading the total petroleum Chevrolet of Rick Corelli. Hornaday has been to Victory Lane four times, Tucson, Bakersfield, Monroe, and Topeka. Corelli looking for his first win. Mike Bliss on the outside of Sammy Swindell, and Joe Rutman on the comeback from that early spin. Right behind Bliss. He's battling Mike Bliss for uh, fifth place right now. Mike, that's, a, that's an amazing comeback. Of course, he's got fresh rubber on the truck right now. And uh, if he can get clear of Bliss, then uh, I think he can run the next group down. But Bliss is having perhaps his best race of the series so far. But for the third where he's at Bakersfield, this could well be Mike Bliss's best day this year. Sammy Swindell after this battle of the pick down there. You see he's a lap truck. Look at Cedric. I told you he lost a few positions when he got together with Fortin Gay. Now he's stuck behind these trucks that he was clearly ahead of a while ago. That, uh, that little incident cost him more than anybody. Back up front, Corelli was right there. He was nestled right up against the bumper, not touching, but right there with Ron Hornaday. I'll tell you, I think he's got the better truck, and like he said at the break there, he was having trouble making the pass, but once he makes that pass, he's gonna pull away. Tell me, Doug, when a guy's running that close to you here, is it hard not to watch the mirror to see what he's gonna do? I hate that. That's the worst pressure at this racetrack, is when you look in the mirror and it's full of race cars, it just uh, gets on your nerves, it's tough. Hopefully that's one. Look, there he goes. Whoa! <laughs> Boy, that's a great, great shot from the in-truck camera right there. Trouble turn three. One truck is hard in the wall. Gary Teague. I bet you that he would tell us right now that that styrofoam is not so soft. Teague and the Jim Rosenblum truck try to come back after a hard crash at Topeka. This is his first race back. And you see the back of that truck is used up. And I think what happened with him, and, and, and it looks to me like he backed directly into the wall. Yes. That's exactly what happened. The back of the truck went directly into the wall. 97 laps complete. We're well into the second half of racing here at Flemington, New Jersey. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Dear Dave, when I saw Wendy's had a new smoky bacon cheeseburger, I said something about that sounds good to me. So I got them for the whole firehouse. It's delicious. Some guys especially like the three strips of hickory smoked bacon, some the two slices of smoked cheddar. But we all agreed when you put that on a quarter pound of fresh beef, that was some sandwich. Dave, come on by. We'll let you wear a big hat and ring the bell. Dear Jerry, thanks. Is Tuesday okay? Try Wendy's new smoky bacon cheeseburger. Hey, Mike, hand me my channel on flyers. Tommy, give me that flyer over there with the blue handles. What kind of flyers is that? These are channel lock tone groove flyers. My dad uses them on his race car, too. For the tough jobs and the small jobs, reach for channel lock, the handiest flyer of them all. Hey, guys, anybody seen the channel lock flyers? Channel lock. Be sure you're getting genuine channel lock flyers. Look for this trademark. <laughs> You want to know how to choose a motor oil? Take a ride to your local garage and see what the mechanic puts into his own car. Fact is, of all the brands of motor oil, more ASC certified master technicians choose Valvoline for use in their own cars and trucks. So before you buy a motor oil for your car, know the one more top mechanics put into theirs. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000-mile all-season steel-belted tires at an incredible low $109. That's right, any 75 or 80 series, any four, just $109 at Pep Boys now. 
Put yourself in the boots, the hat, the jeans, the chefs of a rodeo cowboy on a hot Friday night in Mesquite, Texas. Get your vicarious thrills right here on Championship Rodeo, every Friday night on TNN. It'll be the clay flying, not the styrofoam, tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. You won't want to miss the World of Outlaws. Live on TNN, the Amico Knoxville Nationals comes your way at 10 o'clock tonight. Be sure to tune in for some great sprint car racing action live from TNN Motorsports, of course. Let's go to Pit Road and Randy. Well, Rick, Caro Rick Corelli's crew chief, Joe Garoni. What about it? Uh, seems like when the, we got close to halftime, you closed in on them. You had them covered. Right now with new tires, not quite there, but the, car the truck's good. Uh, can you take them tonight? Uh, actually, I think we can if we get a long run. Uh, we have the truck set up to where it, it needs some laps. The more laps we get, the faster we get. And so it's going to be interesting to see how the end of the race turns out. So no complaints from him? No, he's happy right now. This is a real tough racetrack to pass on, so we've got to be careful. Okay, good luck. If I had that truck, I'd be happy, and, and I would agree with that assessment, that if Corelli can find a way underneath or around, he, he could step away. I think he just needs to roll into the turn, let the truck get a little bit high, and use an old dirt loop, cross underneath, take him going down the back stretch or the front stretch. The main thing he needs now is long green flag runs. We haven't had that very often. We've already had eight cautions for 40 laps of the 101 that we've run. And this time on the restart, Hornaday gets about a car length, and again... Corelli will have to get around Sammy Swindell. Does so, but he's going to bring along Jack Sprague in the number 25, who is the third place truck. Boy, Corelli Sprague has just kind of sneaked up on everybody. A good, strong run in that Rick Hendrick on truck. That's a new ride for Jack Sprague. In the bus 25, Trouble. giving it a ride. In the wall, number 64 goes in hard. Michael Dawkins was in ninth place. Tenth place, rather. He was on the lead lap. But he has shortened up the already short bed of that Chevrolet and knocked down the left rear tire. Well, he's seriously damaged the payload capacity there. Tried to stay on the lead lap, but as you see, was unsuccessful. So Dockin will make it around to the pits. Hopefully no great amount of damage. Of course, he'll have not much spoiler on the back of that Chevy. Could have some interesting handling. Well, you see him already sideways there, Mike. He's Watch how hard he hits this barrier. He just then hit the brakes and uh, the wall really did some work on that truck. Uh, styrofoam or not, that was going to do some damage as fast as he was going when he hit that thing. Oh, but I'm, I'm really impressed. <laughs> not so much with the amount of styrofoam we've used up, but at the amount of damage that it has prevented. Well, let's go down to the pits of the lead truck. That's uh, Ron Hornaday Jr.'s. Well, we'll talk to his crew chief, Doug Riker. Uh, what do you think? Uh, when we got close to halftime, he was having trouble holding off Corelli on fresh tires. It looks like you don't have a problem doing that. What about as this race wears on? Well, uh, Rick Corelli is still pretty good right now, but uh, our truck is a little bit tight, and uh, we didn't quite make enough adjustments during halfway, so we're just going to try to hold on. We got a big picture we're looking at for the end of the year, and uh, right now, Papa John's, our CCA collectibles, uh, we're hanging in there. Um, I think we can hold them off, but uh, Corelli's running pretty good. So uh, we're talking them through it. We're giving them all the coaching we can here from the pit. So we'll see what we can come up with. No doubt about it. He's up on this uh, top of this toolbox. He's spotting the best he can. He's talking to him just about all the way around, guys. Well, it's the same thing no matter where you are. Here they call it big picture racing. In the modifieds, they call those guys pointer sisters. But you can't be a pointer sister when you're running out front. That's where Hornaday is right now. They're the young guns of racing. And on their Sunday afternoon showdown, these next generation superstars start with the next generation Die Hard battery. The longest lasting Die Hard ever. The same Die Hard you can buy at Sears. Don't trust your Sunday drives to anything less. It happens in the hospital. It happens at home. It's the onset of heartburn. It's an attack of acid indigestion. For these stomach flare-ups, the number one choice of hospitals is Maylox. Hospitals know that nothing works faster to rush heartburn relief. Now you know it too. Fast-acting Maylox. Hospitals can count on it for speed. And that's just what you need. 
Maalox, the first choice for hospitals, the fast choice for home. In fast-acting Maalox tablets, too. Listen up, Sprint Car fans. It's the biggest night of the year, and these winged warriors are ready to crank it up. TNN Motorsports presents live coverage under the lights of Knoxville, where top names like Dave Blading, Steve Kinzer, and Andy Hillenberg will be kicking up the dirt. It's the World of Outlaws Amico Knoxville Nationals, live tonight, 10 p.m. 9 Central on TNN Motorsports. They've just waved the green once again here at the Stevensville Genuine Parks 150. And just like the last restart, Hornaday's number 16 took off. Corelli's number six had to work around Sammy Swindell. And now they shuffle out single file, and Corelli closes back in again. Yeah, Corelli got, got the best restart that he's had so far this evening, Mike. A big battle back there. I saw Mike Bliss in his number two truck. He's running fifth. And behind him, Joe Ruffin running sixth. Butler, look at all these guys. We got John Kinder, Kinder spins at turn one. No caution, no contact. Gets the gear. Get going, John. Come on, John. And gets going. We'll stay green. 40 laps to go. Guys in the old number three truck. Well, we got more trouble up there. Between one and two, Butch, Butch Miller, Miller and the 30 of Dennis Setzer. The Ford and the Dodge get together, and this will be a caution. Not quite sure how that started. First thing I saw was Butch Miller sideways. And there's the damage on the Dodge. Dennis Setzer, that's the active trucking on the back. Of course, they run the trucking company here in New Jersey and a Winston Cup team as well. Setzer was running in ninth place, though. It's kind of costly for him. He'd been in the top ten all night in that Dodge truck. Let's take another look at it. That's the ortho truck of Toby Butler going around Bob Strait. Uh, Butch just loses it. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, the back end got out running. Boy, Butler barely gets by there. Watch Setzer. He comes in with nowhere to go. Boom. Oh, and right into the rear end, the left rear wheel of Butch Miller. Let's check with Randy. Uh, I don't know if we've gotten a good shot of it yet. Up there in turns one and two, maybe just around one, there is some oil. I've seen a lot of crew chiefs uh, talking about it, so and then they're all trying to get to these NASCAR officials to well, at least check that position out in turn one. Uh, as these cars go under caution in the turn one. Thanks, Randy. Butch Miller was on the bottom and coming out at turn number one. May have slid in that oil. Certainly his truck went around. And then he got clocked by Dennis Setzer. We'll be right back. Wet roadways like this inspired Goodyear's newest all-season Aquatread radio, the all-new Goodyear Aquatread 2 with a deeper, wider aqua channel to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction and the new TreadLife compound. Goodyear gives you a 65,000 mile warranty. So you've got wet traction when you need it. The all new 65,000 mile aqua tread two, only from Goodyear. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. If I wasn't here, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it. These people just witnessed an amazing demonstration. We put this Duraloop treated engine through the ultimate torture test. We drained all the oil, all the water, then flooded it with a fire hose. It kept on running because Duraloop protects your engine like no other product can. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. Now, let Duraloop make a believer out of you. Duraloop, peace of mind in a bottle. Well, I'd like to tell you, going over 300 miles an hour is like being in the space shuttle, so I've never been in one. But I can tell you this, it's like a runaway freight train. NHRA on TNN Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer. A look at the 21st century, featuring great ingredients and recipes of the future. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to 89th Street Pizza. Choose from our menu or enjoy the all-you-can-eat pizza, soup, and solid buffet. Try some of our famous dessert pizzas. Apple, cherry, peach, and more. 89th Street Pizza. Come see how pizza will be served in the 21st century. You get a permit, you look at her problems. Then, okay, you, get, then you get an inspection. Oh, if a contractor tells you he doesn't pull permits, chances are he's unlicensed and breaking the law. Florida law requires licenses for electrical work and several categories, including pool and spas, roofing, air conditioning, and plumbing. 
Unlicensed contractors may not be insured, so if someone's injured, you may be liable. Always ask to see a state contractor's license. Don't get nailed. Hire a licensed contractor. So that's the nation of NASCAR. For more information, call Monday through Friday, 615-889-6611. Randy? Well, there's the damage to the Dodge of Dennis Setzer. Dennis, what happened out there? Well, just an unfortunate thing for the ATS re recycling Dodge there. Uh, just Butch Miller went off in the corner, got a little loose, come up in front of us, done committed to go high. It's just one of those things. Okay, better luck next time. Thanks. Another restart. Same story. Hornaday gets away. Corelli has to work around the 38 of Sammy Swindell. And that is not any problem with Swindell. He started on the inside of the front row as the first truck one lap down. And it's just a matter of Hornaday setting the pace as the leader, getting a good jump on the restart. And then Corelli having to work his way by as number 25. Jack Sprague is doing right now. Like in defense of uh, Butch Miller there in that spin, looked like he was all by himself. There was oil on the racetrack. Somebody had dropped a little string of oil. Looked like Butch got in it and cleaned up and took care of it before we went back to green. Well, let's see if we can get a long run here. That's the one thing that Ron Hornaday probably does not want to see and the one thing Rick Corelli needs. Absolutely. This is working in, uh, in uh, Hornaday's favor right now. As Doug Richard told you, the truck still got a little bit of push to it. That push doesn't really show up until after about a 15, 20 lap green flag run. They haven't had that in the whole second half. Therefore, he's been able to hold Corelli off. And Mike Skinner is coming. He got underneath Jack Sprague for third place. Gave him a little wake-up tap. Break, gave him a little room on the bottom, and Skinner went by. Now Skinner is about, you can see him putting distance already on Sprague, about four or five truck leaks, but he is almost a full straightaway or a full turn. How do you say it here, Doug? <laughs> but how does two lead trucks? I'll tell you, those guys are starting to get away, though. 30 laps to go next time by. Rutland making a move underneath Mike Bliss. They have been battling. Boy, and he may take Cedric with him. <laughs> he just got Bliss up out of the groove, and once you get out of the groove here, boy, they're passing you by like you're sitting still. Bliss stays up there, Cedric will get him. There he yep. goes. Doug, is there a lot of nerfing to pass here from well, the inside? Not really. Usually when you nerf, it's trouble for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, these two leaders look like they've figured this place out. They're pulling away. Watching Cedric and Mike Bliss there and Joe Rutman, the Brady for the Mac Tools for working around Swindell. Rutman has moved back into the top five, but I think the Cedric's got something for him. In fact, it's we're back up front now. I'm starting to say, though, I think Cedric has got something for everybody, but he's got a lot of traffic to go through. He also had to come from the back. There's a look at your top five. And for most of the race, it's looked just like this. Rick Corelli edging, edging up on the rear bumper of Ron Hornaday, but unable to make the move inside. Corelli looking for his first win of the series. Though he did win in the spring training races of Tucson, you saw live on TNN to, to debut the Super Trucks on national TV. Ron Hornaday with four victories. You know, and I think if, if this game comes down to the guy that's the hungriest, as much as Hornaday likes to win, I think it's Corelli, though. He is so frustrated this year. He's used to winning. He has not won, but that one time in Tucson in this series, not the regular season, he wants to win really, really badly. And Cedric has passed Joe Rutman. As we said, Bill Cedric has got to pass Rutman. So that changes fourth place. Here goes Corelli. He's got the room. Oh, big move. Great move. Power move. Here comes Hornaday back to the inside. And Corelli shuts him down. I think Corelli will check out now. I think he'll just absolutely drive away from Hornaday. Let's see how wrong that might be. Doug, it looks like everybody has moved down the racetrack and everybody's running a lower groove than at the start of the race. Well, there's not as much rubber down there, so the track probably feels a little bit better. I, I imagine the groove by now is getting pretty slippery. Saw her, saw Corelli. He's working the wheel. He's not just throttle steering that truck. He's really working the wheel. I think he's got it figured out, though. He looks good. You know, from Corelli's standpoint, though, if I had just passed the guy to the lead and still pressured me, 
I would want that guy to be Ron Hornaday because he will not run into you. He will not get into you. Hornaday, one of the cleanest guys out there. He won't give Torelli any trouble unless it's purely accidental. All right, let's, uh, let's show you the lineup and positioning of the top five around this square five-eighths mile oval. Here are your two leaders, Torelli and Hornaday, and here is third place, Mike Skinner coming up, and the, the back to the number 25 of Jack Sprague. So not a whole lot of distance separating the front runners. Skinner has actually closed a little ground when uh, Corelli and Hornaday were battling for the lead. Mike Skinner edged up just a little bit on He's closed that gap about uh, 10 to 15 truck lanes. Randy? Let's check with Randy. No doubt about it, Glenn. They've got the watch on them down here in the children's pit. they got a smile on. I don't know if they have enough watch to do it. 19, but he's definitely coming. They're snapping the watch. He's closing in. Does he have enough time? We'll have to wait and see. But tough all year. I don't think so. 19 laps? I don't know. I, I think he's going to run out of time. If it stays green, he's going to run out of time. Catching him one thing, passing him is entirely another. Especially when you're looking for your first win. Well, the gap has stabilized first to second. Rick Corelli's total petroleum Chevy. And the Papa John's pizza Chevy. That push is starting to show up at Hornaday's truck. Corelli appears to be just a little quicker in the short shoot there when he gets right back in the gas. His truck turns and, and accelerates just a little bit quicker than Hornaday does. Now you see uh, Skinner steadily on the move. Running good lap times now, but I just don't think he's got the time to pass. Mike Skinner, the point leader, looking for his 12th top five finish in 14 races. Every time he has been in the top 10 this year, it has been a top five finish. He has had a phenomenal year. 16 to go. Don't forget, tonight, 10 p.m. East Coast time, the Knoxville National World of Outlaws Sprint Car Racing. You'll love it. There's your interval, first to second. Now it's the back to battle for fifth, where Cedric in 75 is pulling down on Jack Sprague. The lap truck there is Frank Davis in the zero. This is fourth place. Mike Bliss is back in sixth, and Joe Rutman seventh. Toby Butler, 8th, Dave Resendez, ninth. You know, Mike, I look inside of uh, Cedric's truck there. He's got the uh, darkened full-face visor on. Everything was in bright sunshine when we started. The whole track's in the shade now. I wonder if it's any, any kind of visibility problem. Why don't he flip it up? He's probably too busy. <laughs> Never too busy to see. <laughs> okay. That's one thing about this racetrack. It demands your attention all the way around. You don't get a break. There's no straightaways to just relax and just run down the straightaway. Four straightaways and four corners. Here's the battle for fourth place. Jack Sprague having a very impressive debut in the Rick Hendrick Budweiser, number 25. To the outside as they left John Kinder. Bill Cedric had the room out there, but Sprague came up and took it away as they moved on the lap truck. Next time by, 10 laps to go. Fourth place battle here. Sprague, best finish was fifth at Tucson. So that number 25 truck, Sprague, is looking for his best finish of the season. Also on the lead lap, Toby Butler. There's a look at 64, Michael Dockett, who was on the lead lap. He got back on track after that crash into the, wall, into the styrofoam block wall. Fourth place battle right there. And there's Rutman behind Mike Blitz. Has been able to climb only to about seventh place. And Toby Butler trying to hold off the number seven of Dave Resendez. That is back at eighth place. Yeah, they've been having a heck of a battle for about the last 15 laps. In fact, uh, two laps ago, Resendez got into Butler, turned him a little sideways, but he backed off and let him straighten the truck up. Not good battles all the way around the track here, not just up front. You see the leaders coming up on them there to put them a lap down. Yeah, and Resendez obeying the passing flag is going to give 
Brent Corelli in the number six of it room. Seven laps to go. Now see if Resendiz can tack on to Corelli and follow him past Toby Butler, who has got to move over for Corelli. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Great call there, Mike. That's exactly the move he's going to try to make. I don't know if Butler's going to let him get away with it. Or not. He's got the room. No, he just didn't have the momentum. Carry it on down into turn one. Ooh. Wow, oh boy. <laughs> took quite a move by Hornaday. We all took a sit, sit back in the seat on that one. Oh, yeah, we, we, we got a truck in trouble on the back stretch. Big spin by 70, 79. Yeah, Jimmy Dick. Yes. And he spins around, keeps going, but the caution is out. Caution with five laps to go. Jimmy Dick in the Universal Vans, number 79, out of El Paso, Texas. A dirt track sprint car ace running his eighth asphalt race ever tonight at Flemington. Says to say hi to the folks in Texas. Ah, uh, partners. So that brings out the caution at lap 145. The rule in this series, you must run the last two laps under green. Now, who else does this bring into the equation? Truck it, number three. If you Mike hint, Skinner. it's the black truck, folks. <laughs> Six-time winner, Mike Skinner. There he is. He's right along thinking, man, I thought they'd never throw that caution. What took them so long? <laughs> That's not what Rick Corelli is thinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? A caution for what? Now, when you're out there and you, and you got a fast truck like Skinner's got, and you're, you're slowly gaining on it, but you know you're running out of laps, you're hoping for a caution. You just hope that it's not you. Not what he wished for. We got the... As, you know, as in Winston Cup racing, the last 10 laps to restart a single file so right. three trucks to be up front. All right, now, Doug, you've won nearly 400 modified features and four championships here. What does Rick Corelli have to do these last few laps? I think he's got to make sure, protect the bottom groove. If anybody's going to pass them, make them go around the outside. We had a barn burner at Denver when uh, Mike Skinner came up on Butch Miller. Miller gave Skinner the bottom at Denver, who got underneath him. But Miller was able to hold him off by, got back around and held him off by inches at the line. It was very different. Now, next on TNN, you'll see Opry backstage, followed by the Grand Old Opry Live. So catch all your favorite country music stars right here next on TNN. And then at 10 p.m., live World of Outlaws sprint car racing from Knoxville, Iowa, the Nationals. We're going to have green flag, white flag, checkered flag. Let's remember those great restarts that Ron Hornaday's been getting when he was leading. Can he do that again? Now, Mike Skinner is waving. They have waved off the restart this time. So we'll run one more lap of caution. All right, you're Ron Hornaday, Doug. You're in the second place truck. Well, if he's got enough confidence, he could roll right in on the outside and make that outside groove work. But I don't know. That's a tall order. But in doing that, does he does he jeopardize giving up second place, Doug? Because Skinner's going to be right behind him. Does he have to protect the bottom also to hang on to second? Well, he's going to have to. He's got his hands full. Let me put it that way. <laughs> well, remember what Doug Rickard said to Randy. Now he's the crew chief for the car that you're riding with right now, Ron Hornaday. We're big picture racing, and the big picture is that right now Ron Hornaday is 109 points behind Mike Skinner for the championship. So I think, I think Hornaday in number 16 might be more concerned with the three truck than the six. And also those five points that he gets for finishing ahead of Skinner in the rundown. He got, he's got to gain as many points every time as he can. If he can only get five tonight, that's what he's got to get. Doug Rickard, Banjo Grimm up on the toolbox. And Randy's in the pit of Mike Skinner. But here we go, two laps. Green is out. Good restart for Corelli. No granny gear in that six truck. All that speculation was for Doc. They both got, look at the boot, look at this. Wow, Hornaday just shot right up onto the rear tail getting that car. And he's going under him. Something wrong with Corelli. He just didn't get down. He didn't protect the bottom. They don't touch. Clean, hard, knuckle racing. One lap to go. Hornaday up front. Wow. I can't believe that. No point racing here, folks. Or last chance. And you saw the six truck tried the bottom. They made a little contact. Here comes Skinner. Checkered flag. Ron Hornaday to win it sideways. Whoa.
Boy, they love their stock car racing here in New Jersey, and they gotta love super truck racing. What a finish. That is amazing. Ron Hoare today has got to be one of the smartest drivers in any form of racing right now. He saw a hole, he took advantage of it, and look what he did for him. That was so good, we got to show it to you again, but first, we'll take this break. We'll be right back to Flemington after this. This is the desert. And these are Chevy trucks. About the only thing growing out here is our reputation. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Chevy trucks. Like a rock. It happens in the hospital. It happens at home. It's the onset of heartburn. It's an attack of acid indigestion. For these stomach flare-ups, the number one choice of hospitals is Maalox. Hospitals know that nothing works faster to rush heartburn relief. Now you know it too. Fast-acting Maalox. Hospitals can count on it for speed. And that's just what you need. Maalox, the first choice for hospitals, the fast choice for home. In fast-acting Maalox tablets too. My feet are so sweaty and smelly. My wife calls me swamp foot. You need new, more powerful Odor Eaters foot powder with odor-destroying baking soda. It not only can absorb 25 times more wetness than pure talc, now it has over 25 times more odor-destroying power than Shoal Super deodorant powder. Wow, no more swamp foot. It sure dried up that smelly swamp. Dry up wetness, destroy foot odor with new Odor Eaters foot powder and new Odor Eaters foot and sneaker spray. Got a car? but need an engine? Then come to Pep Boys, where you'll find a huge selection of over 1,200 quality engines for your car or light truck for as low as $699.99. Import or domestic, all have a 12-month unlimited mileage warranty. And you can charge it with your Pep Boys credit card and pay as little as $35 a month. So come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Today's exclusive coverage of the Stevens VL150 on TNN is brought to you by Pep Boy Automotive Super Center. Let's show it. There's, that is not Sammy Swindell leaving to go to Knoxville, folks, but let's show it to you one more time. And uh, Doug Hoffman, what happened here? Boy, I'll tell you, you can see uh, Rick just let the truck slide up a little bit and just allowed him to get underneath you. I told you he needs to protect the bottom. He, maybe he was a little loose. Maybe that's why he got a little high, but that's all it took. Glenn Hornaday did just what he did on the initial start of the race. Jumped to the bottom and went. Absolutely. Remember I said on those restarts, he was quick. He's right out of the chute. He's as fast as anybody. He saw just a little bit of a hole there. You see Corelli get back up on the outside of there. He had nothing for him on the outside, and he's got to worry about Skinner coming up on the inside. But... Like Doug says, and they make a contact there coming off before. Doug Hoffman, thanks for joining us. You got a modified race to run. We'll let you out of here, but we're very glad to have you up here with us. And let's go to it. Thanks. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road, take you to victory lane. Here's Randy. On top of that, this win uh, is congratulations to the Chevy teams, it says, for winning the inaugural manufacturer's trophy for the series. But uh, nonetheless, Ron Hornaday, a heck of a last couple laps. I know you needed that caution. You got it. You stuck it in there and won this race. I really appreciate that. Uh, you know, I'm sure glad we got the wrap this up for Chevrolet. They're pulling for Skinner and I to win this thing. And, uh, you know, I thought we didn't have nothing for Corelli. And uh, he, ended, he ended up... Uh, he ended up... Uh, and that yellow came out. He slipped up on that last corner there. It gave me enough just the way I did, bet, you know, when I slipped up. But uh, I got to say thanks to Papa John Chevrolet Action Collectibles. I mean, they're number one in die cast. And, uh, you know, get your tires. Look at these tires. I mean, we could have just ran forever on these tires. It's great. Hey, give us a blow-by-blow. Blow. How did you did you believe it when, that, when it opened up there and you could go inside them? Well, I didn't believe the yellow flag, and I knew I was pretty good off yellow. Their truck was a little tight, chattering the front tire. And every time I got off the gas, it, it snapped the rear loose with a locker. So, uh... When I seen that yellow, I said, oh, great, that's what we need. Let's get a couple couple laps under there and, and keep going. But uh, I didn't think we had this one. And uh, that yellow came out. He pushed up a little bit, hit that bump coming off of whatever corner that called. I think it's one big corner here. <laughs> but, uh, no, I just got to thank everybody. And, you know, to get back underneath them and get it for their green-white checkered, it's a great deal. And, uh, you know, snap-on tools. And, you know, uh, 
Craftsman's been a big part of this deal, and I, I keep forgetting to say them because they're a big series sponsors of it, but uh, Craftsman does a heck of a job to support this whole deal, and, uh, you know, NASCAR and the Super Truck Series, and, uh, you know, you, you guys come out here and do what you're doing. It's great. Appreciate it. And, of course, uh, you've got a couple of great uh, car owners in Teresa and Dale Earnhardt. Oh, Teresa and Dale Earnhardt are the greatest. Uh, I hope they're watching this, and uh, hi, everybody. And uh, I just got to say hi to the guys back at my shop. Uh, they do a great job keeping that going. I haven't been there for six months, but uh, everything else has uh, been great. Let me, uh, let me weave over this way. <laughs> Congratulations from Rick Corelli. Rick, we, we talked about you protecting the bottom. I know you wanted to protect the bottom. You were thinking about it. It didn't happen. What no, happened? It didn't happen. I mean, my truck took about three laps to get going, and... Uh, then it checked out. And other than that, it was just loose. You know, we were just a little off on uh, restarts, and you know that's one of the things. We had a restart there at the end, and uh, you know Ronnie got a good run coming off there. Got up underneath me, got me loose like I got him loose. You know, I got sideways down low, and uh, that's it. If we didn't have that yellow at the end, would have been good. I didn't mean to get him at the end, but I was just, I mean, mad. <laughs> Congratulations on a good run for Rick Corelli as well. Mike Skinner has also uh, stepped in here. Mike, uh, as this race began uh, to close, we thought maybe you might have something for him. Didn't have much the whole entire race. Halftime, they worked on it, took a half a rubber out. Uh, he had a good run, but not quite enough to win. Well, we had the fastest truck there for, you know, several laps the second half, and uh, the lap traffic just kept on kept on. There were some guys that was pretty fast, you know, on the restarts and the lap, and the lap trucks, and... Uh, Got down there at the end. I was faster going up and then. Congratulations to you too, Ron. But uh, we'll get them next time. It's a good points race for us. Okay, let's go back upstairs to Mike Joy. Great race, guys. Thanks, Randy. What a finish. That's one of the most exciting. Well, it's not. It's that way every week in the truck series, you bet. man. That helicopter leaving was going to Knoxville, Iowa, as that banner shows. You will see the Nationals next. Well, at 10 o'clock tonight, you'll see the Knoxville Nationals World of Outlaws. Sammy Swindell's on his way. Hope he gets there in time. We'll be right back. Today's cars are a technological wonder. So many makes, so many models, so many parts. In the old days, one standard part would fit many cars. Not anymore. The search for someone committed to having the part you need when you need it can be downright treacherous. You need auto parts specialists, like All Pro and Bumper to Bumper. At All Pro and Bumper to Bumper, auto parts are our business and our only business. The auto parts specialist. All Pro and Bumper to Bumper. We put these glass walls on the course at Road Atlanta to demonstrate the wet traction and performance of the Goodyear Eagle Aqua Tread. Racing inspired dual aqua channels sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. Broad shoulders add aggressive grip for precise cornering. Its unique tread compound helps you stick to the road. You get the performance of an Eagle, the wet traction of an Aqua Tread. Eagle Aqua Tread, only from Goodyear. Oh, she's got to notice me when she comes by. I mean, look at me. What's not to what's, what's not to notice? I'm here. I tell you, if you want to feel good, you got to look good. And if I'm going to run good, I got to feel good. Look at me. I'm designed for a high octane gas. I love it. That's what I need. This Chevron Supreme with Tech Run. I mean, it makes me run like a champ. It's all good stuff. I mean, it's mind boggling. No premium outperforms new Chevron Supreme with Tech Run. Chevron, simply smarter. I mean, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I feel stupendous. On any given day at Sun Valley Middle School, you'll see something going on that is quite inspiring. Mr. Burns knows that to motivate and educate his students, he must make the learning process fun and interesting. And that's why NASCAR is now a part of everyday life for these students who are using NASCAR to help study math, science, reading, art, and even physical fitness. NASCAR, the teams and drivers, would like to recognize all of the teachers like Mr. Burns who are using NASCAR to help educate children. Unless you felt the heat, faced the pressure, known the intensity, you don't know racing. We don't do a lot of talking. We just get right in the middle. One word, win. Join Rusty Wallace for the wildest ride on television. Win, Sundays on TNN Motorsports. And believe me, it doesn't get any closer. Welcome back to Flemington, New Jersey, the squared circle, 5 8 mile, which produced some great racing and a wild finish tonight as Ron Hornaday picks up his fifth super truck victory. Here's a look at the order of finish. 
as they still have modified a late model stock car racing to go here the regular saturday night nascar winston racing series program here at the flemington fairgrounds well you've heard from the top three finishers let's meet a fellow who should be pretty happy with his fourth place finish here's randy yes he is mike matter of fact uh, show him what you got in your hand there little cell phone who was he talking to you got it rick hendrick Congratulations on a great run. How was your boss? Happy for you? Oh, he's thrilled to death. You know, I just can't thank him enough. Rick Hendrick, Jimmy Johnson, Dennis Cotter, and the whole crew. They, you know, they give me something I can race with. And even when it, it wasn't perfect, it was still good, you know? Fourth was our best finish of the year. And I tell you what, the old Budweiser Chevrolet, she was a little loose. But, you know, we drove our hearts out, and the guys worked their butt off. And anything I want, they, you know, they work toward it. These guys don't give up. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I promise you, we'll woo and races in this truck. I'm excited to, I'll get out. I can't even express my feelings. I'm normally a quiet guy, but I'm probably babbling, but uh, it's the best opportunity I've had in my life, and I want to thank everybody. What kind of a career boost can this be for you? We know how happy you are to be in the seat of that car, but what has it done for you? Mentally, it's made me a nervous wreck, you know? I mean, this was, this was, do it, do it, time to, this was time to do it. There was no excuses, you know? And we didn't win the race, but the first time the, this whole team's been together, and driver, and crew chief, and everything. We come out of here in the top five. We ran good. We give Budweiser a good showing. We give Hendrick Motorsports a good showing. We will win races. Yeah, congratulations on a great effort. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Now, you hear that noise in the background? That gets my heart going. There is Doug Hoffman lined up in his number 33 modified. Fifth in points this year, four-time track champ. And the track record holder at 16 and a half seconds here at the Flemington Fairgrounds. They're the uh, headline division of the Winston Racing Series that runs here weekly. Of course, those same cars compete on the Featherlight Modified Tour. We're going to take a break here from Flemington and come back to wrap up a wild night of super track race. I want to see that finish one more time. And we will when we come back. get into super truck racing just to add another trophy to our collection or to add another 15 minutes to our fame and we didn't do it just to show up the competition okay maybe we did chevy trucks like a rock you know keeping the interior of your truck cool isn't easy especially when it rains that's why you should get a vent visor the vent visor installs easily on cars, trucks, or anything you drive with no tools, no screws, and no holes. It lets you park with your windows cracked to ventilate the interior, even when it's raining. So the inside stays cool and dry and protected from damaging heat. It really is the easiest, most practical accessory to fix up your truck. Now, if I could only get NASCAR to put vent visors on the super truck. My father was in the garage business, and his father was in the garage business. Well, my father was my mechanic all my life. I've got some old, old Craftsman tools that are still around, which I love and I, I treasure. And my grandfather and also my father's tools, which uh, nobody could ever buy. 1,600 Craftsman hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. He really believed in Craftsman, same as I do. Only at Sears. The newest way you can cure athlete's foot is the way doctors cure it with the same ingredient they've prescribed millions of times. It's new Prescription Strength Desinex. Nothing cures athlete's foot better. New Prescription Strength Desinex, the doctor's cure. If you live for the feeling, the moment has come. It's an all new season. Buckmasters, Sunday, 1.30 p.m., 12.30 Central on TNN Outdoors. Today's exclusive coverage of the Stevens Rio Genuine Car Parts 150 on TNN has been brought to you by Chevy Truck, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Here's what's coming up tonight on the Nashville Network. You're at the Stevens Rio Genuine Car Parts 150, of course, here at Flemington, New Jersey. And we're going to show you the finish. You've got to see this one more time. I want to see it one more time. Off the restart. I'm not sure he can. I'm not sure he can do that again. Well, yeah, he did. Even on the replay. But you saw right there how how long it took Corelli's truck to come up to speed, just like you said, it took him three, four laps. One they saw that, took advantage of that up, and then Corelli left him. Corelli tried everything he had left in his bag of tricks to get back by him. He tries him inside there, he rubs him. Watch him, he's gonna go right to the outside here. 
As they go into three, he just doesn't have anything left for him. And at this point in time, he's got to look at Skinner coming up. He certainly doesn't want to lose a second. And he does his horn today just because he was mad. Yes, as he said. Randy? And in here, uh, Bill Sedgwick, great run for you. I know that you certainly had one of the quickest trucks. Uh, that's funny about racing. You never can tell unless we're actually absolutely on you, and we got a stopwatch on you to determine who's the fastest truck. But at the end, you were probably right there. That's true. You know, we were running third there. Uh, we were a little bit off in the first half. We made a couple of adjustments, but I'll tell you what, this Spears Manufacturing Sunoco Chevy pickup was really fast. The last 40 laps, we were actually two to three tenths quicker than the leaders. Track position meant everything here. You know, we, uh, we're back in seventh there, got together with a lap truck turned down on me over there, you know, and that's the way it goes, part of racing. But uh, we're happy we had a very fast truck today. A driver with your type of experience, what can you take away from the racetrack? Can you constantly learn? Did you take anything away from this race that you can put in your bag and say, well, I learned a little something tonight or not? Well, we're learning more about these radial tires in uh, short track racing with these Chevy pickups. You know, it, uh, this is a very slick track. It's uh, You're constantly turning. You're in a slide just about all the way around this thing. So the guy with the best setup is uh, is going to come out on top. I felt like we had the best setup today, but we didn't come out on top because, uh, you know, situations. But uh, real proud of this uh, Chevy team. Okay, great run for you. Thank you. Mike? Well, it'll change the points around just a bit, Randy. Not up at the top spot where Mike Skinner still leads Joe Rutman, but Glenn, Ron Hornaday was the big gainer tonight. Yeah, Ron moved from uh, fourth place into third with his victory, and he was uh, going into the race. He was like a 109 points behind the leader, Mike Skinner. Now he is only 94 points behind. So Hornaday third. You can see Rutman maintains second there. He lost about 19 points uh, due to his sixth-place finish. So good night for Ron Hornaday all the way around. And Rick Corelli's fifth-place, or rather second-place finish moved him up to fifth in the points from six. Now here's what's coming up tonight on TNN, immediately following our telecast, Opry Backstage, followed by the Grand Old Opry Live. And catch all your favorite country stars next here on the Nashville Network, but don't touch that dial because later tonight, in about two hours, you'll be going live to Knoxville, Iowa, and the World of Outlaws, the Amico Knoxville Nationals. See if Steve Kinzer can come through both the C and the B main to make the feature event tonight. See if Mark Kinzer, starting from up front, can win one of the biggest prizes in all of sprint car racing. And we're just thrilled to be able to have a crew out there, Steve Evans, in charge to bring you the Knoxville Nationals live. I want to go somewhere and watch that because I want to see Steve Kinzer start in the back of the C main, finishing the top two there, which puts him into the B main. In the back. In the back of the B main. And he's got to finish either first or second in the B main to go to the rear of the field in the A main. Is that right? And I want to see if Sammy Swindell's plane gets there in time. <laughs> His brother Jeff, of course, is starting on the pole for the B main. But tonight here at Flemington, New Jersey, the Stevens Beal 150. Goes to Ron Hornaday, who led most of the race, gave it up on a final long run to Rick Corelli, and then on the final restart came storming back to end up in victory lane. What a great super truck show, and we've been proud to bring it to you here live on the Nashville Network. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, this is going to be exciting. Every week, it seems like the super truck series gets more and more exciting. You can't ask for a closer finish than that. You can throw a blanket over those three. Special thanks to Winston Racing Series champion Doug Hoffman. For Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton, I'm Mike Joy. So long from Flemington, New Jersey.